With 2010 drawing to a close, many have their focus turning toward the holidays. We'll show you how you can make the season a little brighter for those in need, plus some ways to make your own holidays a little greener as well. But first, could you afford to be out of work and sick for a day? How about a week? Flu season is here, and that's why we sat down with public health expert Amy Thomas to discuss ways to avoid illness and keep you healthy straight through to the new year. All that, plus we have the latest county news on this episode of PCR. Welcome to PCR. I'm your host, Kiara Jones, Director of Public Information and Media Relations for Pitt County Government. Here, as always, to keep you informed about the latest happenings in your community. Now that we're well into the fall, the holidays will soon be in full swing. We have several topics to cover today to help you have a safe and enjoyable season. But first, let's send it to the PCR Info Desk, where Christina Peffer has the latest in county news. Thanks, Kara. On the heels of receiving a FIT community designation, Pitt County can now also be counted as one of the 100 best communities for young people. This honor coming from the America's Promise Alliance, an organization founded in 1997 by former Secretary of State General Colin Powell and his wife Alma. Announced in September, the honor was awarded last month at a ceremony in Washington, D.C., in which Powell served as a keynote speaker. The 100 Best Honors is awarded to celebrate communities' extraordinary efforts to improve the well-being of the youth and help end the nation's dropout crisis. It is November of an election year, which is sure to mean new faces in local government, and Pitt County is no exception. In a tight race, Republican Glenn Webb won his bid for commissioner of the 6th District with a 51.5 to 48.5% win over Kenneth Ross. District 6 includes areas of Aiden, Grifton, Swift Creek, Blackjack, and Chicot. Democrat Eugene James keeps his commissioner seat as representative of District 2 with a win over challenger Joey Moore, while Commissioner David Hammond, Tom Johnson, Mark Owens, and Jimmy Garris all retain their seats as their respective races went uncontested. And finally, from the InfoDesk, there is now officially a new sheriff in town. While having won the Democrat Party nomination in the May primary, Sheriff-elect Neil Elks ran uncontested in the November general election, cementing his win as the new sheriff of Pitt County. Elks is getting set to take office as he will assume command from current Sheriff Mac Manning Jr., who has led the department since 1998. For more information on this and all other election results, you can go to our website at www.pittcountync.com gov and click on see election results that does it for this edition of the news back to you Kiara thanks Christina for many people this is the busiest time of year but with the added crowds comes the potential for some unseen health risks when we come back I'll talk with public health expert Amy Thomas about this flu season and what you need to look out for Welcome back to PCR. With the holiday season now upon us, most folks are pretty busy. However, between all the holiday parties, shopping, and family gatherings, so will all the germs and viruses that always show up this time of year. That's why today we're talking with Amy Bearflower Thomas of the Pitt County Health Department about how you can stay healthy while enjoying the holiday season. Welcome to the show, Amy. Thanks, Kiara. Okay, so first of all, we don't have to live in fear of germs, right? We can still enjoy uh, the Christmas season without you know, being afraid of getting sick. <laughs> Absolutely, don't freak out just because it's the holiday season with germs. A lot of the diseases we think about that come around during the holiday season are spread to person to person through respiratory means, so through sneezing, coughing on people, or through foodborne infections. But the good news is there's a lot of things you can do to prevent those infections. And what are some of those things we can do to prevent? The number one thing you can do to prevent flu, foodborne infections, 
a lot of things is simply washing your hands and that seems kind of an elementary thing to do but it's really the best thing you can do to prevent all those infections and to keep it spreading from person to person and really you know not to go back to elementary school too much because it seems like kids in daycare are much better at this than, than adults are but just as a reminder you want to wash your hands often certainly before you're preparing food um, after you're handling raw food such as poultry or meat things like that after changing diapers after using the restroom certainly after coughing or sneezing into your hand or a tissue those sorts of things you want to wash your hands as well as after touching animals so it's important to remember how to wash your hands and so what you want to use is clean running water warm preferably um, get your hands wet and then put this some soap on lather them up really well pay attention to those nails that's where we see a lot of germs get stuck and then wash your hands lather them for a good 20 seconds a lot of people like to sing the happy birthday song twice is a tool that we use but really wash them for a good 20 seconds and then rinse them really well and then you want to dry them with a paper towel and generally it's really great if you use that paper towel then to turn off the sink and maybe open the door That's so you don't right. get your hands reinfected and another great tool if you don't have access to soap and water is these alcohol-based hand sanitizers. The only times those aren't good to use would be when you're preparing food, you really want that soap and water, or when your hands are visibly soiled, you want that soap and water. But otherwise, those alcohol-based hand sanitizers work really well. You just want to rub those on one hand, put it on one hand, rub them together until it dries actually on your hand, and then you're good to go. Okay, so one of the biggest viruses um, um, around this time is the flu virus. So talk about that and how we can um, help prevent that. Certainly, it is becoming flu season. And so every year, unfortunately, flu is really unpredictable. We'll have normal years come along and then we have a year like last year with H1N1, which was a very unusual year. And so a lot of people always wanna know, is this gonna be a normal year? And um, I, I can't predict it, I don't have a magic ball. Um, science doesn't, but from what we see so far, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty normal year. Certainly nothing like last fall where we were seeing infections through the summer and through the fall. We really haven't seen a lot of flu up to this point, which is pretty normal. Normally flu starts to peak anywhere from November to March, so it seems like it's gonna be a pretty normal year. So um, let's talk about the uh, flu shot. Now, we mentioned H1N1. Last year, there was a separate shot for H1N1, but this year, that particular um, strain is in this shot. Talk about that. That's exactly right. So every year the flu shot changes. So a lot of people think, well, why do I need to get a flu shot every single year? And it's because actually different strains go in that shot every year because flu mutates and changes so much. And there's actually three strains in the flu shot every single year. So what happened last year was H1N1 kind of came to the forefront after they started making the vaccine. So that's why we had to have two shots last year. But this year we don't have that problem. We know about H1N1. So H1N1 is actually included in the flu shot this year. Okay, so there's the flu shot and then there's the flu mist. What's right. the difference? It's the exact same vaccine. So a lot of people will ask, you know, is, is one just the swine flu or is one seasonal flu? It's the exact same vaccine, has the same components. It's just how it's administered that's different. So the shot is what people traditionally think, um, and, and lots of people can get the shot. Um, is people from ages six months and up. As long as you're not allergic to eggs or you haven't had a serious reaction in the past, you can get that flu shot. It's very safe. Um, generally, if you have any side effects, they're very mild, such as redness or irritation at the injection site, but that's it. Um, the other option is the nasal spray, or also called flu mist, which is a great option, especially for kids, because it's very quick and it doesn't require a needle. And what that is is just a quick nasal spray that goes into each nostril. And again, very safe, very effective, mild side effects, such as maybe congestion or a runny nose. So you often, um, I'm sure you get questions a lot, and we hear about uh, different myths concerning the flu and the flu shots. Can you get sick? by taking the flu shot? That's a great question and that's one that we try to clarify every single year and the fact is you cannot get flu from the flu shot. Um, the flu shot itself is actually a totally killed virus and then the nasal spray or the flu mist is a weakened form of the virus that actually is not strong enough to infect you in any way. So you can't get the flu from the flu vaccine. But we hear people all the time say, well I got sick after I got the, the flu vaccine and really kind of two situations that it could occur. 
This time of year, we see all sorts of respiratory ailments. We see people with colds, allergies, things like that. So people get their flu shot and then get the sniffles a couple of days later and say, I got the flu from the flu shot. But it's not. It's one of those other ailments, one of those other respiratory symptoms that are out there because the shot's only going to protect you from the flu. And then the second thing is, and a lot of people don't realize this, but it takes your body about 10 days to build up its immunity from the time that you get the vaccine. So if you're actually exposed to the flu, somebody with the flu, a couple of days before you get your vaccine or up to 10 days afterwards, you can get the flu because your body hasn't built up its immunity yet. But it's not from the flu shot. It's absolutely not from the flu shot. Um, you give a lot of presentations um, here uh, to the Pitt County employees and I'm sure in the community. Uh, how important is it for employers to talk to the employees about flu prevention um, and as well as just staying healthy in general? Sure. Well, I mean, when it comes down to it, when we think about businesses, we think about money. And it comes down to, to money for businesses. The flu, um, every year, about 30% of our population gets the flu. And that's a lot of people when you think about it. And anybody who gets the flu, it's, it's not just the, the sniffles, you know, when we think about flu symptoms, people can get pretty sick, very fatigued, very tired. They're generally out of work at least three to five days, some people up to two weeks. So when businesses start to think about their employees getting the flu, you see a lot of absenteeism. And then if people don't take the flu seriously and come to work sick, then they're spreading it to other people. And then you've just kind of got a chain reaction of absenteeism, loss of productivity, and things like that. So that's why it's really important for businesses to encourage people to stay home when they're sick. And that's a tough message for a lot of us, but it's really not worth making other people sick. And then also to encourage vaccinations, flu vaccinations, because really the more people you get vaccinated in that company, the less likely flu is to spread rampantly throughout. So say for instance you do get the flu, what should you do to lessen the symptoms um, or not only the flu, but you know, just you mentioned foodborne illnesses. What should you do um, if you do get sick? Sure. We'll talk about flu first. In general, with flu, most people don't need to seek medical treatment. And certainly, we don't want people who have the flu sitting in waiting rooms or pediatricians' offices if they're not that sick infecting other people. So, most people are going to have they're just going to run through that course of illness and they're going to be fine. So most people don't need to seek medical treatment, don't need a prescription medication. They just need to stay at home, stay away from other people. I say don't, don't have a holiday party when you're at home with the flu. Stay away from other people so you don't get them sick. Wash your hands, cover your cough so you're protecting those people who are taking care of you. And stay home for at least 24 hours after your fever ends. And that's because that's pretty much when your infectiousness ends. And so, you know, and then stay hydrated. You can take, take things like Tylenol to reduce your fever. But generally just stay home and take care of yourself. But there are certain people who are at high risk of complications if they do get the flu. These include pregnant women, the elderly, young people, people with chronic medical conditions such as asthma, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes. Those people, if they do get flu-like symptoms, we do encourage them to contact their provider. Their provider may want to see them and just check them out, or they may want to prescribe them an antiviral such as Tamiflu, which can actually it doesn't get rid of the illness, but it can lessen the symptoms and kind of lessen the duration. Um, is there an increased risk, um, say for a pregnant woman to get the flu as opposed to a, a non-pregnant woman? Yeah, well it's kind of, I wonder why you're saying that, Kiara. <laughs> it's kind of like the other chronic conditions I talked about. It's not that you're more susceptible to the flu, it's that if you do get the flu, you're more likely to have complications. So if anyone wants to find out more information about um, how to prevent the flu or even any other um, illnesses, because um, you know we have a lot of food out for Thanksgiving and Christmas and sometimes people can leave food out too long or not cook it um, enough, how can people find out more information about how to stay safe? Yeah, that, that food board is, is a big thing this time of year. So when you're thinking about having holiday parties, lots of times you put the food out, it stays out for three or four hours and it's really important to cook food to the proper temperature and then hold it at the proper temperature and if you don't that's when you can have some of these foodborne infections with some not so pleasant side effects and so there's actually a great website um, it's www.holidayfoodsafety.org and it specifically gives you great instructions specific to the holidays of how to keep your food safe right. 
And then as far as flu, um, the county actually last year during H1N1, we decided to set up our separate website just for flu in Pitt County. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, has a, it links to the CDC and the state health department, but specifically it tells you how to get your vaccine in our county. And that's www.flu.pittcountync.gov. And last year we had a great program in the county where we were able to go into public schools, private schools, and daycares and actually go during the day and give kids the flu mist. Um, and we hit about 30% of school-aged children last year with the flu mist. Unfortunately, our funding was pulled this year. However, we do have some free flu mist at the health department, and that's for healthy children from the ages of 2 to 18. And so if your child is healthy and in that age range and you're interested in a free flu mist, um, you're welcome to go to that website, get some more information, or call the health department and make an appointment. And that number is 252-902-2300. Well, Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And if you would like more information on the flu or to schedule a flu shot, just go to our website at pittcountync.gov health, or you can call them at 252-902-2305. We'll be right back to answer some of your emails in just a moment. We often get questions emailed to us at the Office of Public Information, and we found that many of them are quite common. So we're going to answer some of them right now in a segment we call Citizen Emails. Shane writes, I'm trying to measure a parking lot at 700 East Arlington using the GIS measuring tool, but am unable to do so. Can you help? Well, Shane, you can contact our GIS department at 902-3825, and they can show you how to use a measuring tool on Opus, our online parcel information system. Our next email is from Lois. I don't know who to contact regarding this, but on Porter Town Road, just before you get to Herman Garris Road, there is a tree that is leaning over the road. It has been that way for a while, but is leaning more since the heavy rains we had several weeks ago. It is a dangerous situation since it could fall on a vehicle and hurt someone. Please look into this matter. Thank you for your attention to my request. Well, thank you, Lois, for contacting us. And you can call the North Carolina Department of Transportation at 830-3142 for help in this matter. And our last email, how do I change my party affiliation? When you register, you will be asked to declare your party affiliation. You may register in either of the following ways, Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or unaffiliated. Party affiliation determines the political primary in which a voter is eligible to vote. Currently, voters registered as unaffiliated may choose to vote for Democratic, Republican, or Libertarian candidates in partisan primaries. Voters may change party affiliation under signature by mail or any registration location within the registration deadline, which is 25 days prior to Election Day. In general elections, voters may vote for any candidate within their assigned districts, regardless of party affiliation. You can find this and more information on the elections website. Just visit pittcountync.gov slash DEPTS slash elections. Do you have a question or comment? Just go to our website at pittcountync.gov and click on the Contact Us link at the top of the page. While you're there, you can also find valuable information about government services, a meeting schedule, and there's even a link to Pitt TV. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier, this time of year people are always on the go. This often includes trips to the shopping malls. While many of us celebrate the season by exchanging gifts with our families, there are quite a few who will neither have gifts this season nor families to share them with. So what are some ways we can help ensure others have a happy holiday as well? PCR went to find out. Between the bells ringing and the car horns blowing, there's often something lost on the holiday crowds this time of year. While it is easy to get good deals on the latest toys and electronics for you and your loved ones, it is just as easy to overlook those whose holiday may not be so merry and bright. That's where Mildred Daniels and the rest of the staff of the Department of Social Services comes in. 
these toys all go to the foster children of Pitt County Department of Social Services. And our foster children, all the children that are in the legal custody of the agency, they may be placed in foster homes, they may be placed in group homes with family, with court approved caretakers, but the main thing is that they are children that are in the legal custody of the agency, which makes the agency responsible for them. At any given time, there are just over 100 children in the Pitt County foster care system. Daniel says while many of them may have parents, the only Christmas they are likely to see is the one provided by DSS. That's what our goal is, to make sure that they get the things that they want because they are our children and we want them to be able to, like I said, not be singled out because they may not get what they want for Christmas or may not get anything for Christmas. Um, you know, the difference is that it's our role to make sure that the items are provided for them, so that's why we have this project. That project is called Holiday Cheer, and for going on 30 years now, it has helped ensure good holiday memories for children who otherwise wouldn't have any. You know, we are looked at as the parent. It's our responsibility to make sure that while we are providing for these children, you know, as far as their residence and, you know, medical care, all of those things, you know, we have to make sure that we function in that parent role because they may not be with parents. Until late December, the DSS staff will be taking donations of toys and clothing for children in the foster care system. Daniel says not to worry if you aren't sure what toy to buy. For some, the best gift may not be a toy at all. We try to give gift cards to, you know, the teenagers, you know, usually starting from like nine, you know, on up because, you know, th that's an age where, you know, we want them to start learning how to, you know, have some responsibility. You don't have to worry about a lot of exchanges and, you know, returning things because, you know, we provide the gift cards. They, along with the caretakers, can go and, you know, select what they want. And even though times may still be tough, if there's one thing experience has taught Mildred Daniels, it's that the people of Pitt County are always willing to help out. There's definitely people within the community that care about our children because, you know, it looks bleak in the beginning, but on the end, it all comes together. So we know that there are people out there that care. If you or your business would like to donate or help collect donations, you can reach Mildred at 252-902-1134 or drop by the county offices at 1717 West 5th Street in Greenville. Let's not forget that there are adults in need as well. To find out more information about how you can help them, contact Red O'Quinn at 902-1205. So when all the fun is over and the gifts have been opened and the family is all gone, how do you deal with the mess that's usually been left behind? Our Christina Pepper went to find out. It's the time after that time of year again, when you're left with all that your friends and family left behind. While the holiday season is a great time to share with the ones you love, the cleanup afterwards can sometimes be a little overwhelming. From about Thanksgiving to New Year's, we'll see about a 25% increase in our waste. That's why Pitt County is here to help. According to Paula Clark, Recycling Coordinator for Pitt County, all of your holiday trash may not necessarily belong in a trash can. But material doesn't need to go in the waste stream. On our 14 county collection sites, you can drop that material off and it's going to be recycled if you put it in the commingle boxes. Most anything related to holiday gift giving can be recycled. This time of year, Pitt County Waste Management sees an increase in materials such as gift wrapping paper, cardboard boxes, catalogs, and junk mail. With the recent flood of new consumer electronics, Clark says they are now even better equipped to handle larger items. In the past, we've run a, a, a electronic collections uh, drop-off for years now, but as of now, we're also taking in televisions. So everybody that's getting that new television set this year, you don't need to put that in the waste stream. We can recycle that right along with the rest of our electronics. And being environmentally conscious isn't limited to your gifts either. Clark says your recycling efforts can start right at the dinner table. When your families get together, there's a lot of cooking, more cooking in house than normal. So you'll have more paper products like your uh, disposable napkins, plates, forks, all that material. Try not to use that. Try to create less waste by using reusable dinnerware. 
and when you're cooking that cooking oil we can now recycle that cooking oil it's turned into biodiesel fuel we have a cooking oil drop off at two of our locations one at Bells Fork and one at the transfer station on Allen Road if not recycling your holiday trash is a matter of convenience, chances are there is a recycling center very close to your neighborhood. So getting your trash there shouldn't be a hassle. We've got 14 of them and they're spread throughout the um, county to make it convenient. So there should be one located close to you. To find your nearest recycling center or to learn more about recycling in general, you can call Pig County Recycling and Solid Waste Management at 252-902-3353 or go online to www.pickcountync.gov slash departments slash solid waste. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of PCR and look forward to seeing you again next time. For more information on this program or any of the topics mentioned today, just visit our website at pittcountync.gov. You can also check us out on our favorite social media sites like YouTube, Twitter, and Flickr. Just search for Pitt County Government, all one word. From all of us here at PCR and the Office of Public Information, I'm Kiara Jones. Thanks for watching.